I bring you the tale of a murder most foul. Scene of the crime? A radio station in New York City, and the body is still warm. Eight suspects stand accused. All have reason to kill. So, who done it? Only the keenest detective could crack the case of the murder in Studio One. Hello, I'm your narrator, speaking to you from Studio One, a radio station here in New York City. The year is 1941. I'll turn up later to guide you through the ins and outs of this labyrinth mystery. But first, a quick introduction to this evening's players. Are you ready? The role of Inspector Cameo Clough will be portrayed by Hoda Kotke. The one and only Savannah Guthrie steps in as her faithful sidekick, Minerva Hammersmith. Carrie Sanders plays Glenn Slope, our studio's ever-present fix-it man. Then there's Tom Yamas. He's our man in blue, Lieutenant O'Hanrahan. The divine Chanel Jones plays a psyker, Astrid Reeves, the coroner. Crucial to all murder mysteries will be Craig Melvin. Al Roker is Elwin Rapel. He is a radio up-and-comer who everybody wishes would just go home. And here she is, Stephanie Rule, who plays the no-nonsense radio writer, Miss Felice Fothergill. The very brainy Peter Alexander is the uber-intelligent Professor Worthington Frommick. The lovely Jenna Bush Hager is our ingenue, Gladys Pinkney. And finally, Harry Smith. Harry is the stuffiest of stuffed shirts. The station's sponsor, Humphrey J. Plimsoll. Hmm. Thank you. Now, without further ado, we bring you Murder in Studio One. it easy. You act as though something terrible's happened. It is terrible. This is awful. This is the worst thing to ever happen to radio. Don't get so excited about it. Where's the body? Right here. Poor, poor Van Grimm. How long has he been dead? I don't know. Only yesterday I was, uh... Wait, I... wait, wait, wait. What's that paper he's got in his hand? It, it looks like a piece of script to me. Let me read this thing. Audible and the Today Show present... What is Audible and Today? Anyway, uh. presents a mystery melodrama entitled Murder in Studio One, written by Norman Corwin and starring Hoda Kabobi <laughs> as Cameo Cloth. Can you imagine Hoda Kabobi as Cameo Cloth? Who's, who's Cameo Cloth? That's me, you idiot. Ah, oh, haven't you ever heard of Inspector Cameo Cloth? Well, no. You see, I'm just a maintenance man in the studio building here, and I'm maintenance just... Maintenance or no maintenance, don't you realize that I am the expert who solved the purple opal murder and the strange case of the fedora and the incident of the checkered pajamas? Well, well, no, ma'am. I just, I, I had really well, no... Well, I am. 
And to be perfectly frank, I shouldn't be fooling around with a small potato of a case like this one. I should say hot potato. Ma'am, considering who Van Crimp was. Who? Poor Van Crimp. Who was Van Crimp? Why, the most important radio announcer in the country. He was? I'll make a note of that, but for heaven's sakes, why isn't my secretary here to take notes? Where is everybody? Why am I always the first on the scene of the crime, even before the coroner? Hereafter, I am going to take more time. It is improper for a detective, as distinguished as I am, to show up before anybody else. That is not the way they do it in the movies. No, I agree. That ain't how it's done. But poor Van Crimp. All he was such a... I really want is to be left alone to finish my research on the lepidopriology of ancient Persia... And play the horses. But no, every fortnight somebody turns up with a new mystery. It's ridiculous. I've solved enough murder mysteries to start a radio series. I'll tell you. I mean, I'll just tell... Hey, boss. I'm looking all over for you. Big mitre case just broke. It's about time you showed up. This is Mr. Slope, who works around here. And this is Minnie, who never works around anywhere. Okay, what's this big murder case you say just broke? Uh, A guy named Van Crimp. Found Mitre in a radio station. They've been calling you on the phone ever since. You wouldn't mean the murderer in Studio One, would you? Yeah, that's it. How do you know? What studio do you suppose this is? Is this Studio One? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, joke's on me. That's a hot one. Ah, oh, what a gag. Where's the stiff? On the dead side of the studio, right here. Dead side. Ha <laughs> ha, that's a good one. Why do they call it the dead side? Because sound is dead on that side, of course. Make a note of that, Minnie. Make a note. Okay, Okay, though. That ain't all that's dead on that side, though. Hey, ha, 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 what a gag. Well, (laughs) here's the body, ma'am. He was such a nice fellow. Wow. Van Crimp. uh... So I rush up here Mm -hmm. to tell you there's been a mitre in this studio, huh? Well, the joke's on me, huh? That's a laugh, all right. Manny, stop enjoying yourself long enough to find out what is delaying Lieutenant O'Hanrahan and the coroner. Ring up headquarters and ask when they... Nope, never mind. Here they are now. There's cameo now. Beat us to it again. Elementary deduction, my dear Lieutenant O'Hanrahan. Miss Clough, this is Dr. Lionel Bumbridge, the Mm. coroner. Mm. Greetings. Mrs. Minerva Habersmith, Miss Clough's secretary. Mm -hmm. And this is Astrid Breeze. Mm. She's the psychic. Mm-hmm. How do you do? She solved the Congressional Investigation Committee murder and the case of the missing case. Uh, how do you do? How do you do? Lieutenant, why did you call me on this case if you've got Miss Breeze? Are you uh, auditioning detectives? I uh, know Breeze is a consultant, right? Ain't that right, Breeze? Oh, I sense death. <laughs> Especially over here. You mean the body? So make a note of that cameo. <laughs> no, don't bother, Lieutenant. I am resigning from the Van Crimp case effective immediately. <gasps> now, now I'm sensing a fear of failure, insecurity, early retirement. What kind of double talk you call that? Oddly enough, she can't sense a knuckle sandwich. Yeah. Please don't leave the case, cameo. You want crime to triumph? Crime don't pay. Poor Van Crimp. O- only just last Monday, he was telling all me... All right, all right, I'll stick with the case, but it's against all my principles. Good, that's the stuff, Cameo, that's the spirit. Yeah, well, let's get down to business. What is that paper sticking out of Van Crimp's side pocket? Looks like it's got, a uh, typing on it. It looks like a commercial announcement. Let me see this. Don't forget to remember to insist on the name Fudgy Cream for a real honest-to-goodness, creamy, delicious, wholesome, tempting, tangy, healthful, different, appetizing, mellow-rich, lusciously nourishing, energizing, irresistibly fragrant, refreshing, crunchy. He was supposed to read that tonight at 9 o'clock. Well, he's better off this way. Now, Dr. Bumbridge... We've seen you poking around there long enough. Have you determined the cause of death? Oddly enough, the victim was not killed violently. Very strange. Yes, it is strange. The evidence points to strangulation, but there isn't a mark of any kind to indicate the manner 
of strangulation. Minnie, make a note of that. Okay, do. I take it, doctor, that you have completed your examination? Except for autopsy. Are you through for the present? Yes, ma'am. But you haven't used your stethoscope to examine the corpse, Dr. Bumbridge. Why is that? Surely, Miss Clough, you are joking. Make a note of that, Minnie. Doctor, I am not joking. But you know that a coroner never examines stethoscopically. When I arrive, it is not to examine a patient. Don't hand me platitudes at a time like this. So once again, may I suggest you use your stethoscope? This is preposterous. Specifically in the area of the duodenum. Absolute nonsense. The man is dead. Why'd you do what you told you, Joyke? Just leave this to me, Minnie. I'll handle the repartee and you just stick to your shorthand. Okay, doke. Just trying to help. And besides, it's jerk, not joyke. Very well. Very well. If it will humor you any, Miss Klopp, I will listen to his pulse and respiration, which ceased at least two hours ago. Why... Only yesterday, Van Crimp, he says to me, Lem, he says, you know what? Well, I'm Dr. Bumbridge, what do you hear? Uh, um, 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 nothing. Nothing? N nothing? No, nothing. Then why, sir, are you so pale? I, um, I'm, I'm not well, I guess. Here, here, give me the stethoscope. I'm going to listen for myself. Can I see that, sir? Thank you. Hmm, 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 thank you. Mm. Just as I thought. Lieutenant, listen to this. Let me see this. Mm -hmm. ah, I, I, I can't believe mm. it. Well, what is it? Don't it, keep us on tenterhooks. Well, it, it, it's a quartet. It, it's music. They're, they're singing music. What, what kind of music? It's, it's my favorite song, the, the Boogly Woogly Piggy. Uh, uh, are they swinging it? Yeah, it's swinging loud. Well, oh. would the Honorable Miss Breeze care to listen? Oh, thank you so much. I feel it now. I feel it now. Shh. This man had a love for music. Are you kidding? Perhaps the ever-perceptive Miss Breeze can advance the theory oh. at this point? The past? The present, tomorrow, of the week. Give over, Miss Breeze. Let me listen. How does this thing work? You got to just put it on. Have you an explanation for this cameo? I'm lost. Simple. Yeah. Uh, now they're singing Maisie. Maisie. Ah, uh, Maisie, you're driving me crazy. Come away from there, Minnie. Huh? Come away from there. What? Come away from there. Now, it's obvious. It's obvious. Van Cripp was murdered by the administration of a dose of deadly poison, insidium. But how can you tell without an autopsy? I am coming to that, Bumbridge. And when I get there, you'll do well to have an explanation for your strange report but I, of I, not I was, hearing I... anything. Now, as I was saying, insidium is a newly discovered poison, the effect of which is to choke off the oxygen supply of the blood while at the same time producing a mood of profound cynicism in the victim. Cynicism? Yes. Observe. Look at Van Krimp. He what? died with a sneer on his face. <laughs> Why, so he did. But how does that explain all the music coming from his duodenum? Simple. Insidium is a radioactive substance. It gathers in the duodenum, and it sets up a sort of receiving station for radio waves and other electrical impulses. It acts like a crystal set, you might say. She knows the stop there, boys, doesn't she? Miss Clough, this, this poison you speak of is unknown to medical science. So, so how do you... How Quite do you... so, doctor, but there are only three persons in this country who have studied it. And I, I'm one of them. I finished writing a paper on the subject. Cameo, I gotta hand it to you. You, you solved this mystery. Now we have to find the murderer. I mean, you certainly are so... Wait, wait, what'd you say? In the meantime, Lieutenant, I suggest you place Dr. Bumbridge under arrest for suspicious conduct. Now, wait a minute. Oh, poor Van Krim. Also, detain... Mr. Slope, who's been mourning Van Crimp just a little too hard to suit me. Me too. But, 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 but I'm only the studio maintenance man. I, I was only... Also, uh... 
Any others who profess to know Van Crimp intimately? Hey, hey, how you doing? Hey, there. Good to see you. Hello, Bert. Am I in the right studio? Is uh, this Studio One? Yeah, it is. And what do you want? Well, I have an appointment to see Van Crimp, the announcer. And by golly, I'm just on time. And what is your name? Well, you mean to say you don't know me? <laughs> well, my name is Elwin Rappel. Tops and tenors. Singing nightly to Isle's Place, Route 22, where frolics begin, no cover, no men. I've got a lot of flashy, dramatic routines. Young, sober, will go anywhere. Well, where do you think you're going now? Well, you mean to say uh, you're asking me if I'm going places? Well, that's probably what you mean. However, taking down to serious, what I'm saying to you is, where am I going now? Well, as a matter of fact, Van Crimp is a great booster of mine and a real happy doodle dandy kind of chap. He came out to Isle's place to get some South Shell crab that they feature along with my singing. And he told me not to fail when I was in town next time to drop in on it. So, you're a good friend of Van Crimp's, are you? Oh, am I a good friend of his? Why, I say, I'd give him the shite right off my back. He's way up there with the best of them. He's right at the top. He's a sky-high guy. Nobody like him. You mean he's out of this world? Right, right as rain. Do you recognize who's lying there on the floor? Uh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Good old Van Crimp, a uh, tough break. Well, I see you folks need a little cheering up, and I'm just the guy to do it for you. <laughs> That's right, I like to sing. Always glad to be of service to my fellow man. I tell you folks, a smile is a great thing. You remember that old song? A smile will take you there and back. Okay, okay, hey, let's what, take what, your what, smiling what, what, outside. Hey, Come on, let's get you lost, You're making, you're making a big mistake here. Hey, hey, ma'am, you look like you've got a good ear. Yeah, yeah and you're a pain in it. Now go on home, sir. I can tell you have a dandy ear, and I get the boy and girl angle on this one. All right, here we go. We go. Glad to do it too. Wait, wait a minute. All right, come on, big mouth. We gotta go. Let's go. Hey, I didn't do my song. All right, all right, all right. Now. We're rid of him, and I suggest we go about our business. There are a number of people I want to see. Noted. In noted. the meantime, I suggest Van Kremp be given a decent autopsy and a burial so he can stop receiving the Boogly Woogly Piggy and Maisie and other programs of the same wavelength. Cameo and her assistant head to Central Park to digest the facts of the case and some hot dogs. Well, boss, here's the evidence and the mustard you wanted. Ah, well done, men. Now, take this down. Okay. Van Crimp was poisoned sometime during the late afternoon of October 7th. Back. Insidium can kill if it touches the tongue, and it takes about a half hour to work. Back. The victim feels fine until it strikes, and then it's all over in one minute. That's right. That's what it says in your paper on the subject. Very good. Now, when this poison took effect, Van Kremp was in the studio. Otherwise, the receptionist outside Studio One would have been aware of the body being carried in. Yeah, that's right. They don't usually carry bodies in and out of the mm. studio, no. Okay, so that means Van Crimp either crawled or was dragged unnoticed behind the portable screen at the dead end of the studio and there expired. So far, so good, yeah. Yeah, there were three different programs, either rehearsing or broadcasting, while Van Crimp was in Studio One on the afternoon of the 7th. All right, the science talk by Professor Widington Thromick. The adventures of Zaza Zealous. And the Rowdy Rhythm Gorge. Yes, each must be investigated. I also see the sponsor of Van Crimp's Snap and Zip Variety Show, Mr. Plimsoll. I understand he quarreled with Van Crimp the day before he was murdered. Yeah, sure, Plimsoll. His wife died of tomaine poisoning last year. Mm, most curious. Put that down, too. Now, first, we must see Professor Thrummock. A few minutes later, in Professor Thrummick's laboratory. But I tell you, Miss Clough, I only met the man once. And that was at a poker game? Why, yes, to be sure, it was at a poker game at his home in Brooklyn. That's where I live, Brooklyn, the land of the free, the home of the Dodgers. What do you see our boys next year? You <laughs> lost heavily to Van Crimp that night. Yes, that's true. And you promised to pay up before November 1st. Yes. And you also lost a telephone bet on the World Series to him. Yes. Now, Professor Thrummock, 
You are a scientist and you lecture on the radio. Yes, ma'am. You also happen to be one of the three persons in this country who know the secret of Insidium. Why, yes, yes, I do, but it's you know professor the- will be all for present. The duo is now at the Algonquin Bar, questioning Felice Fothergill, author of the Zaza serial, The Night is Dark, but she is already lit. Yes, I write the adventures of Zaza the Zealous. So what? Well, Miss Fothergill, your stories are very imaginative in a macabre sort of way, aren't they? So what? Yes, they are. Van Crimp once told you publicly that he thought your stories stink. So what? And you replied that he'd feel sorry one day for what he said. You also called him an overbearing snob and a stuffed shirt and an exhibitionist who ought to be put out of circulation. Which he was. So what? You accused him of standing around waiting for people to ask for his autograph. He would rather sign an autograph than eat. So what? That's what I'm asking you. Then keep on asking. That is what I intend to do. Listen up, clap. I'm going to sue you for disturbing my peace of mind. I am a very, very busy woman, and I'll sue you too, you little squirt, taking notes on everything I say. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? Don't write that down. Don't write that down. Cameo and Minnie track down Gladys to the one place she's sure to be every Sunday. May's Clip and Curl. Yes, I was Van Cripps. And you sing on the Rowdy Rhythm Girls program, Miss Pinckney? Yes, I do. And you saw him in the studio the day of the murder? No, no, I didn't. I didn't see him. I tell you, I didn't. She says she didn't. Well, you saw him the night before. (laughs) Yes, we had a party. Okay, it was in his home. He was very happy about winning a big, big bet. Later, we went down to Kelly's cabin for a drink. He was very boisterous, and I quarreled with him. Oh, so you quarreled, did you? No, no, it's not what you suspect. It was only... Was he sober? Oh, yes, he never drank. Mm, That's all for now, sister. The investigation continues on the factory floor of Plimsoll, Zippers, and Snaps. What about that, Mr. Plimsoll? Well, you know, I'm surprised that you should uh, ask such a question. Um, Mr. Klopp, Ms. Klopp, I've always enjoyed the most cordial relations with my employees and all those members of my wonderful little family who represent Society Selected Snaps and Zips Manufacturing Company on the air. And that includes good old Van Crimp, too. May he rest in peace, poor man. But you had sharp words with him the day of the murder, yeah? Well, well, I am surprised, though, that my employees have... You know, I like to surprise them with little surprises. Like, now you take this year. The folks are expecting a bonus this year, but I've got something up my sleeve far better than a bonus... And when they get in step with this thing, they're going to be pepped up good and plenty, that's for sure. It's a friendly Christmas plan. All an employee has to do is save his slips that he's issues. That is providing, of course, he has been with the firm for a minimum of 19 years. And if the slips are okay by the foreman and division superintendent, then they're put through the verifier and checked by any competent notary public. They are then issued to the board, and the employee simply waits his turn. This, of course, is a matter of about 10 days clearing. Go on. This is positively spine-chilling. It is terrific, isn't it? Then there's simply a thorough medical examination. If the employee passes, he is entitled to A, a choice of half a day off, or B, one half of 1% discount on articles purchased at the factory commissary. 
I found it always pays to search for methods of establishing warmer relationships my, between oh. myself and my employees. Oh. And uh, wouldn't you agree? There are crimes worse than murder, Minnie. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Cameo and Minnie regroup outside Studio One. Is everybody here, Minnie? Yeah, all the suspects is inside, including Lieutenant O'Hanrahan and the District Attorney, if you want to call them suspects. Stranger <laughs> things have happened. I also got it. Was Mr. Elwin Rappel. What a smack. He's like a cartoon in the New Yorker. <laughs> Very well. Let's go in and clear up this mystery. Yeah, cool. Good evening, everybody. I am so sorry, especially you, to upset your plans for the evening, but there's a little matter of a murder to clear up, and then you can all go home, all but one, because the murderer is in this room. What? what? I almost swallowed my cigar. I, uh, <laughs> Stop trembling, Mr. Plimsaw. You're making all the other guests nervous. I don't want to swallow this thing. No, that's not. That's just for sure. That's okay. They say the ashes is good for the teeth. If you don't mind, Miss Hammersmith, I'll conduct the investigation. Yeah, okay, okay. They're just trying to help. Hey, if anybody needs any help, I'll be glad to do it. Glad to do it. You know, I've got this new song that's going to Okay, help okay. Thank you. Just sit quiet and continue to uh, pick your teeth. Now... Let's begin with you, Dr. Bumbridge. I'm innocent. I'm innocent. You can't prove a thing. When you heard the Boogly Woogly song come out of Aunt Crimp, you wanted to keep it to yourself. You could have offered your earphones to confirm the findings, but you chose not to. Whom were you trying to shield? N nobody. You see, I, I, I was so shocked by the music you that I just... You were I... shocked? A coroner? Shocked? Make a note of that, men. Note it. All right, now to you, Mr. Rappel. At your service with a smile. You are a top tenor, but you were also low man on an assault with intent to murder charge in Texas in 1932. Oh, right as rain, got to admit it too, but I've changed since then. And now I find that a smile makes you smile. You want to sing a... You didn't tell us before that you went to the fourth game of the World Series with Van Kremp and rooted for Brooklyn while he cheered for the Yankees and that you both got into an argument about Joe DiMaggio. Well, right, right you are, but now Van Crimp said... Never that mind, Mr. Slope. You looked upon Van Crimp as almost a son, didn't you? Uh, I loved the boy. Whenever he was in trouble, I would you just sort know, of... he did have a habit of touching the point of a pencil to his tongue when writing. Yeah, I often urged him to correct that habit. I told him it was unhygienic. It certainly was. It may or may not come as a surprise to you to learn that Van Crimp died as the result of touching his tongue to a pencil whose point had been dipped in insidium. But, what, what, I, 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 that I, is uh, all for uh, the moment, Slope. Thank you. Now, Professor Thrummock, you had a long and furative talk with Mr. Slope after your program on the day Van Crimp died and in the same studio where the act was committed. We talked about atoms and molecules. I see. You realize that one of your favorite brands of pencils was found in the restaurant downstairs that I, day? I always sign my checks there. Do you always dip your pencil but, in poison? But no, I denied it. I see. Now, Miss Fothergill, you told us that you were gonna... So what? Well, maybe you're right. Now, Miss Pinkney, over to you. No, no, I tell you, I didn't do anything. Take it easy, Cookie. All she said was now, Miss no. Pinkney. Before Van Crimp went upstairs to Studio One, he was seen giving his autograph to a lot of girls in the lobby of the station. Yeah. And you, you, you were looking on very jealously. Y yes, fine. I was furious with him. He was flirting with those girls. 
He sure was a mile a minute, too. And you, Miss Pinkney, already angry with him because of his behavior at Kelly's Tavern in Brooklyn the night before. You, you turned on your heel and you stomped out. She turned on her heel, all right. No editorial comment, Minerva, okay? Is it true what I just said, Miss Pinkney? Yes! Very well. Now, now, I am ready to reveal the murderer. Take notes on everything I say, Minnie. Okay, okay, do The murderer of Cornelius Van Krimp is... Minerva Hammersmith. <laughs> Are you kidding? Minnie, a little while ago when I remarked to Miss Pinkney that Van Krimp was flirting with autograph seekers on the day of his death, you remarked that he was. To coin a phrase... So what? So what were you doing there? It was I even had the other half lips. I thought so. It was up to you that I dictated my paper on Insidium. Therefore, you knew the properties of the poison. Strictly your property as far as I'm concerned. And you let it slip that the opinion that you have of Van Krimp was a heel. Check. He lived in Brooklyn, where you've lived all your life, and it's known that he rooted for the Yankees in the recent World Series at witness to the argument with Rappel and his wager with Thrummock. Go on, you're getting hot. Van Krimp celebrated on the night of October 6th at Kelly's Tavern. He was delighted because the afternoon the Dodgers had lost to the Yankees when the catcher dropped that third strike on what should have been an easy play at the end of the game. Go on. This is strangely fascinating. You... We're at the tavern that night. How do you know that? Well, it was your only day off that month, and so... Yeah, you're you... telling me. Next day, you showed up to work with a new-style matchbook from the tavern. You, a loyal Dodger fan, were infuriated because Van Kremp, also a native of Brooklyn, had turned traitor to the team. So the next day, you... This is not far enough! Sure! I might have been Kremp! <gasps> I picked up Thermic's pencil, which he left in the restaurant, and dipped it in a spot of insidium, and then I asked Van Krimp for his autograph, and he put it to his tongue as I seen him do once before. You did? Yep, I murdered him. And I'd do it again, too. You mean, you mean if you met Van Krimp in another life? Anywhere, anytime, including the Bronx. Minnie. <laughs> Minnie, why did you do such a terrible uh, thing? I, I don't mind a Brooklyn citizen rooting for the Yankees. That's bad enough, I say. It's live and let live, though. That's my motto. Well, with one notable exception. Yeah, but, yeah, but insults is another thing. Do you want to know what Van Cripp said that night at the tavern? He says, them Dodgers are bush leaguers with illusions of grandeur. He says, may they go back to the second division where they belong and never rear their ugly heads again. And then he says, get this, may all their children drop thoid strikes. Man, man, if you'd only told me. <sighs> Did my gorge rise. He says... The only way to explain the Dodgers winning the pennant this year is sunspots. Him, a resident of Brooklyn. And then he says, if it's another 21 years before Brooklyn finishes in the Foist division, which it will be at least, that'd be too soon for me. He says, coist them bums. He says they never was no good and they never will be. That's what he says. The man was a monster. I knew then that Van Cripp was a traitor to his country and to mankind. I knew he'd have to go. It was a far, far better thing I'd done for Brooklyn. Minnie, I understand. I understand and I sympathize. But believe me, it is with reluctance and a, a heavy heart that I turn you over to the district attorney. I saw my duty, and I've done it. Okie doke, boss. No hot feelings. <laughs> Nobody can pull off the perfect crime, but I come close. I feel certain, though, man, that no jury in the world would convict you, except possibly in St. Louis, which fortunately has no jurisdiction in this case. <laughs> Officer O'Hanrahan, the prisoner is yours. I am honored to take such a distinguished prisoner into custody. Thanks, Let's Flatfoot. Go. Things are going to be different next year. You'll see. Yeah, Minnie, <laughs> things is going to be different. <laughs>
thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.